the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Well, it's been about two weeks since I received this beautiful Casper Mining Beast. I've learned so much that I decided to do another deep dive video. Let's start with how much I've mined, how much it's worth, current Caspa price, and remaining time to ROI. So far, I've mined over 22,000 Caspa on my KS0 in 15 days. That gives me an average of about 1,466 Caspa per day. Uh, Caspa's current price is 0 0.02578 cents per Cas. And if we take 1466 and divide by pi, then factor in the speed at which an object falls from the Earth's gravitational pull, we can easily see that this little beast is earning me $37.80 per day. Since I've mined a little over 22,000 Caspa already, that is worth about $570. If we simply plug this data into the Pythagorean theorem, we can easily extrapolate that my remaining time to ROI is approximately 32 days. This, of course, is only if neither the hash rate nor the price of CASPA changes, which we all know it will. Speaking of network hash rate, let's talk about it. The CASPA network hash rate is still kind of just chilling in the low to mid one petahash region. Um, I know it fluctuates all the time and but it just kind of keeps sticking around the low to mid one petahash region. I wish it would just stay there. Stay. Good Caspa. Let's talk about mining pools. Um, my friend Rabbit Mining gave me a tip and I'm so glad he told me this. He said in a tweet to me that he does not set backup pools for his ASICs. He said that it tends to glitch them out. So I decided to faffo for science and I set my KS1 up with no backup pools I have it on Casper pool and I set my KS0 up with my I just left my backup pools and like I had when I initially set the thing up so um, yep sure enough yesterday I was at work and I checked my my pool my dashboard on the Casper pool and my KS1 was hashing along like the beast that it is and then my KS0 was nowhere to be found on Casper Pool. I'm like, well, there we go. The friggin' thing dumped back to Wooly Pooly again. Um, I checked and confirmed. Um, I logged into Wooly Pooly, put my Casper address in there, and sure enough, it kicked to Wooly Pooly, the backup pool. And I don't want it doing that. I want to pick a pool that I like and that I'm sticking with, and I want it to stay there. So um, that's my experiment on the pools, guys. Uh, if you don't want it to flip to another pool, um, just delete your backup pools out. Um, it seems to be kind of worthless. I guess the only way it'd be worth something is if the pool went down for an extended period of time, um, then at least you'd still be mining, but it's kind of a pain. Like I, I just like to be able to check on these things, especially when I'm work. Uh, so, um, I'm going to delete my backup pools out of my KS zero as well right now while I'm doing this video. And maybe you guys should do the same. Think about it and you know, you do what you want to do. Um, I'd hate for you to have like your primary pool go down for a whole day and you lose out on profits and stuff like that. But anyway, I trust Rabbit. Rabbit's a real smart guy, obviously. Check out his YouTube channel. I'm sure if you've seen mine, you've seen his. Uh, but he's the one that gave me the tip. Thanks a lot, Rabbit. I appreciate it. Okay, next topic, fans and cooling this thing. Uh, people keep asking me, why don't you do this, that, or the other thing with your fan? You should aim it this way, bro, because of my non-scientific opinion. And... uh <laughs> Anyway, so I asked my good friend, the Predator, to help me put this question to bed once and for all. You can't argue with the Predator. I mean, well, I don't recommend you argue with him. He will Beep. you up, man. So for these tests, I left the internal mini Noctura fan speeds alone, and I removed my Infinity Axial 1238 fan for exactly 30 minutes, and then had the Predator reinspect my KS0, and damn, I mean, look at how hot that power supply gets. It's reading about 55 degrees Celsius. That's 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Not cool 
literally. Um, I have mentioned this extensively in my other videos and posted it on Twitter and stuff. Um, be careful, guys. Some of these power adapters run really hot. Um, that's morning. Just be careful. Know that your power supply might run really hot. Um, okay, so the surface of the heat sink itself is running um, as hot as 49 degrees Celsius. Huh. I wonder if you could, like, cook an egg on this thing or something. Maybe I'll ask Red Panda Mining what he thinks. <laughs> All right, anyway, so 49 degrees Celsius is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty damn hot. Um, okay, so now let's look at the temps in the web GUI. Okay, so web GUI intake temperature 1, saying 48 degrees, and temperature 2 exhaust is 53 degrees. So that's pretty damn close to what I was seeing with my thermal camera. Um, man, this thermal camera is awesome. Um, okay, so let's move on. Next, we'll do a setup that people keep suggesting to me, which is the fan aiming upwards, sucking the air up out of the device. Um, and we'll just let the predator, you know, show us what he sees. And uh, we got to trust the predator, guys, because uh, otherwise he might F us up. <laughs> Okay, so check out here what the Predator is trying to tell us about the fans facing up. When we look at the surface temps on the heat sink, when the Predator can actually get himself aimed properly at the damn thing, you can see that the heat sink surface temp is about 34 to 35 degrees Celsius, or about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's take a look at the web, what the web GUI says. Um, okay, so the web GUI is reporting temperature 1, which is the intake temps, at 38 degrees Celsius which is about 101 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's reporting the exhaust temps at about 45 degrees Celsius, which is about 113 Fahrenheit. So the temps at the heatsink and in the web GUI are running cooler with the fan on it, which we expect, but I'm still not convinced facing the fan up is the best way to do it on this device, especially when you see that it does absolutely nothing to help cool down that power adapter. I am still getting blazing hot 54 to 55 degrees Celsius or 130 degree Fahrenheit temperatures on my power adapter. Not digging that and neither is the Predator. Okay, last but not least, my favorite position. Giggity. Let's see what the Predator can show us with the fans aiming down and the air blowing across the heatsink and blasting out the sides over the power adapter. <laughs> Okay, so the Predator is showing us how things are looking with the fan aiming down and the airflow blowing across the heatsink and onto the power adapter. Looks like we're getting even lower temps this way of about 31 degrees Celsius on the heatsink when the Predator can get the damn thing aimed properly. Um, so now let's take a look at the web GUI. Okay, so we are getting even lower temperature one intake readings of about 36 degrees Celsius or about 96 degrees Fahrenheit. And we are getting even lower exhaust temps of 44 degrees Celsius or 111 Fahrenheit. And here's the big news, guys. The Predator is showing us that we are getting a massive drop in temps on the power adapter from 55 degrees Celsius when we had it off or with the fan aimed up. Um, 55 degrees Celsius or 131 Fahrenheit. Now we have it down to about 38 degrees Celsius or around 100 Fahrenheit with the fan aimed down blowing across it. That's a huge difference, guys. So um, the Predator don't lie, guys. Uh, <laughs> this this data is just just the thermal imaging camera, um, so can't really can't really fake it. Uh, and also we compared it in the web GUI. So um, I'm going to be leaving my fans aiming down because the Predator don't lie. Um, Predator showing me I'm getting cooler temps all around with it aimed down. 
uh, including on the power adapter. And I'm not arguing with the Predator. <laughs> Look at this thing. Would you want to argue with this thing? Okay, so let's talk about these power adapters now. While I was shooting this video, I got some info from my buddy Fully Electric. You know, guys, I, I love this community, man. Everyone just keeps helping each other out. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, anyway, I was talking with some other crypto dudes like Raymond Brown and Fully Electric, and I was talking to them about their power adapters. Um, Raymond Brown said his power adapter runs cooler than mine. He said his is cool to touch after he saw my video on how hot mine was. So I asked him what his model number was on his power adapter, and he has a totally different model number than me. So Fully Electric uh, went on a mission um, to find a better power adapter that doesn't run so hot. And this is what he sent me. Um, he says, Greater Good Mining, I finally got a power supply unit that only gets a little warm. And he said, technically, I got two. And it seems the higher wattage supports uh, the lower temps of the PSU. So 120 watt uh, power adapter feels a little warm to the touch. And 180 watt, very, very little warm to the touch. Um, it's like room temperature, he's saying. So basically, the higher wattage capacity, the lower temps of the power supply unit, which that makes sense. You know, if like you run a, a power supply unit on a mining rig um, and it's running at like like really high capacity, like, you know, 90 percent of its capacity is going to run hotter. But if you got one that's like a 1300 watt power supply and it's only running at like. 400 watts it's just not going to run as hot it's just thermodynamic so it makes sense um okay and then he goes on to uh show some pictures of the power adapters that he's tried and the prices and he said prices are from 35 to 43 dollars um going to keep he said he's going to keep the 120 watt for 35 it gets just a little warm to the touch not hot the 180 watt is a bit overkill but now i wonder if i can get like a 190 watt version of power two miners it's an interesting thought um Geez, fully electric. I love that $35 one because if it's just a little warm to the touch, um, that's the same price, I think, as the um, Ice River KS0 power adapter if you buy it straight from them. And um, I haven't received my next uh, batch, like my next KS0, so I don't know what kind of power supply they're going to give me, but I'm definitely going to take a look at these ones that fully electric found. Um, and I might get rid of this one that I've shown you guys in my videos um, because it just runs so hot, it makes me a little nervous. Um, I want to keep the fans aim down because overall you saw my results from the thermal camera. I mean, from the Predator helped me out. Um, so the thing runs cooler overall with that fan aiming down. Um, but I wouldn't mind getting rid of that power adapter eventually if it's going to cause me trouble. So anyway, thank you, uh, Raymond Brown, for showing me uh, the model number on your power adapter. And thanks, Fully Electric, for digging further into this um, and getting the info out there. These power adapters can, can cause problems, man. So just keep an eye on yours. If yours gets hot, consider um, swapping it out. So yeah, it's been fun screwing around with this thing. Oh, wait. Speaking of screwing, giggity. Here's some screws that will work to mount the Infinity, Infinity Axial 1238 fan that I show in my original fan recommendation video. Links in the description if you want to know a bit more about the fan I have on my KS0. Uh, in that first video, I uh, the Axial, Axial Infinity uh, fan came with some uh, screws that do not fit in the Ice River KS0. So um, I am going to show you a picture here. Um, these are ever built. You know, screws from Home Depot, screws and nuts that come in a package. Um, they're cheap, and you can see how I mounted my fan. Like, I've just got one screw um, for now in this picture, but I, I put all four screws in and the nuts, and it works great. Um, all I did was mount it through the bottom part of the plate. You don't need a long screw to go through the top part. There's really no point. Um, so anyway, hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, it's super easy and it's super cheap. Um, you don't need the stainless ones. Just skip over the stainless ones. They're more expensive. It's not like you're trying to build a DeLorean here or anything. So anyway, um, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Um, it took a long time to make, so I would appreciate you hitting the like button, uh, commenting. Let me know if you think there's anything else you want me to test on the KS0. Um, and also, if you would uh, please consider subscribing to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. I'll keep putting videos out like this on the KS0 and the KS1. I'm still thinking about upgrading maybe to the KS2, um, but we'll see. I got to I gotta see if this is going to work out for me with the upgrading, guys. Um, so thank you if you participated in the poll. Um, I'm, I'm in contact with Ice River right now, just kind of trying to find out when things are going to ship out and all that. Just like the rest of you, you know, I'm waiting on these and I, I really want to make sure I get it in a reasonable time. So anyway, like I said, um, do me a favor, like, comment, 
subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff. It would really help me out. I hope this video is helpful to you guys. And don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.